Hello, forever friends and family. I would like to welcome everybody to our weekly webinar. Today is May 15th, 2023. And last Sunday, Forever Living Products and we all celebrate 45 years of success. Our company was established on May 13, 1978. And I would like to share with you a video from our CEO, Chief Executive Officer, Greg Moon. Let's watch the video. Happy birthday, Forever family. Can you believe it's been 45 years? Sounds what an amazing, amazing journey it's been. It's hard to imagine that all those years ago, Rex had the vision to create this forever dream. He built it on the simple principles of providing the highest quality products, designing a one-of-a-kind marketing plan, and of course involving the best people in the world who want the opportunity to build a business and attain what matters most. Now, 45 years later, here we are, building on that solid foundation he laid for us. And although we will never veer from those core values, we will continue to evolve and grow in this ever-changing world. I have vowed to harness the power of forever to stay agile and promote growth. We will keep fresh and exciting by continually refining and enhancing our product line, and we will find new ways to do the business and keep up with the technology. We will continue to offer more opportunities for you to thrive because you, as FBOs, are in a place to grow like never before. So today, we will celebrate this 45-year journey, but more importantly, let us be inspired by the road ahead and the exciting potential that it holds. We're just getting started. So happy birthday forever, happy birthday to each one of you. And I would like to encourage everybody to speak up right now and share in two minutes story, in one minute story, what did you join and how you feel for all these years, depends on how long are you with forever, whatever you would like to say. Who will be the first one to share your short, super short story? Anybody hear me? We hear you. Okay. So, thank you. Who will be the first one? Nadia Etinger, go ahead. Hello, everybody. It is really so exciting. 45 years in business. Our amazing company. I, I joined Forever Living in 2009. Uh, it was a blessing from the God that Raich Kachaus invited me and I joined it and since then like all so Nadia, would you please correct your microphone because it's not very clear sound from you. Is it fine now? Yes, go ahead. Okay. And uh, all for those I've met so many people. First of all, I think it's one of the most important people in forever living. Uh and in our circle people, our, our friends. And we, we went for so many rallies together. We spent so many time together. And uh, one of the most important then I since 2009 till now, I I love the product so much. Each product that coming and I think all of us we use it right away because Forever is doing amazing stuff that always uh, on the top, always something to bring for people to look better and feel better, like last product that they created is just already amazing. And and besides not just using the products, and uh, it's such a happiness that when you help somebody and people telling, oh, yes, it's great, it helped me, uh, really, like, uh, I, it's, I, I'm 150% agree with Ralph Kip. It 
one of the best business in the world. And I'm just I'm just honored to be a part of Forever Family and and have such wonderful friends like you are and looking forward to our amazing Forever Living Company like for, for another 45 years. Thank you. Thank you, Nadia, very much. Thank you. Well, I would like to share my super story for the last 19th March. This year, we celebrated our 19 years with Forever. It was some kind of journey. It was some challenge. One of very valuable accomplishment for me is that in May, it will be, it was, yes, it will be by end of the May that uh, we accomplished 4CC on every month's basis. We never miss accomplishment on 4CC. It's not simple, it's not easy, but it's doable if you plan how to do it. It's very challenging, I must share with everybody, but we never missed 4CC since May 2004. At the beginning, it was pretty scary, but when I realized what should be done and how should be done, and Boris helped me a lot to accomplish, to figure it out what does it mean to accomplish 4CC, not to purchase 4CC on every month's basis, then it was much easier. And of course, satisfaction with the money, with the products, and I don't have a pain in my joints since May 2004. That's it for now. Anybody else would like to share anything you would like to say about your business? And if you would like to, we could make a transla translation from Russian to English too. No problem. No more volunteers. Okay, so we continue to our journey and today is, let me change the screen. And we continue to read our book, Mind Reading, hold on for a second, please. Isaac, please confirm what do you see on the screen? The cover. Okay, thank you. So this is a book we continue to read. This is a book written by, the title of the book is Mind Reading for Network Marketing, How to Understand What Our Prospects Are Thinking. The book is written by MLM legend Tom Beagle Schreiter and his son Kiss Schreiter. So we are stopped right last time right here. So please, Isaac, I would like to ask my friend and partner, supervisor from Brooklyn, continue to read from this chapter. Please go ahead, Isaac. Uh, good evening, everybody. The pain of unresolved problems. As humans, we think about our problems all day long. And for some of us, we worry about our problems well into the evening and then we can't sleep. If our prospects worry about their problems all of the time, this should make our mind reading easy. What would be a good uh, opening phrase that tells our prospects that not only do we read their minds, that we also have empathy for their problems. Ready? It's tough. Or if we like bigger words, it's difficult. Both phrases work. Let's do some examples. It's tough dealing with pain 24 hours a day. It's tough when our boss doesn't appreciate us at work. It's tough making up, waking up to an alarm clock year after year. It's tough when we don't get paid what we are worth. It's tough when everything is so expensive. It's tough when we don't know what to do. It's tough when we don't have enough time. It's tough to diet when we are hungry. Do we notice that not only we were 
are we reading th their minds and having empathy, but we're also focusing and increasing their awareness of their problem. Prospects want to solve their problems. They don't want to keep them. We can help. But it seems impossible to read minds. Ah, but we read minds all the time. Here is a simple example. Our friend has an angry, twisted face. Is our friend thinking happy thoughts? Of course not. We automatically understand that our friend is thinking angry thoughts. Hopefully, the angry thoughts are not about us. Without realizing it, we always try to figure out what other people are thinking and feeling. It's not, it's how we un interact with others and build relationships. True, some of us are better at uh, perception than others, but we all do some mind reading. Every time we interact with people, we look for a feeling of trust and mutual understanding that allows us to connect. Is mind reading a skill that can be learned? Yes. Even if we, were, if, if we feel we're currently clueless about what other people are thinking, we can get better at this. We can take our rapport building to a higher level by improving our mind reading skills. How? We're some... Here are some fast tips to make us better no, now. One, pay attention to body language. Body language is a great way to get clues about what someone is thinking and feeling. Look for nonverbal signs of discomfort, such as closed arms or legs, furrowed brows, wrinkled foreheads, clenched fists, tense muscles, or leaning away from us. This can be clues that our prospect is feeling uncomfortable or threatened by us. Maybe we never thought of ourselves as scary. Others might think we're scary, especially if we have salespeople's breath. What is salespeople's breath? It is when salespeople are so hungry for sales commissions, they will say or do anything to get it. Prospects can smell salespeople's breath from a mile away. But what is a good example of body language that can help us read minds? Did we ever see someone smile? Does that give us a, th a hint that they're having happy thoughts? It gets even better. We have the ability to distinguish the difference between a genuine smile and a forced smile. When someone gives us a forced thin lip smile, we know that this is not a good sign. Our prospects are fidgety. They tap their feet. Their faces look anxious. We read their minds. We know the thing. When, when will you shut up? We want to talk. We want to ask a question. Do our prospects roll their eyes when we make our exaggerated claims? That is an obvious body language clue. Do our prospects look at their phones when we talk? Oh, um, not a good sign. Our prospects think that we are boring and not worth their attention. Prospects can only enter entertain one thought at a time in their minds. We want to make sure it is the thought we are sharing. Number two, listen for hot buttons. Ask engineers about the history of logarithmic slide rules. What happens? Their eyes lit up. They become animated. They talk faster with faces of with, with faces of enthusiasm. It appears that the spirit of personality has entered their bodies. Would that give us a clue what they're thinking? What if we're talking to old people? You know those people over 30 years old? They smile when they talk about the old days when telephones had cords attached to the wall. 
they love to talk about the times when we didn't have pictures on social media of what their friends were eating. The times when we talked to each other instead of sharing, staring into our phone screens. We see their thoughts turn inward to that happy place in time. We make a mental note. If we talk more about traditional values instead of new technology and change, we will connect better. What about prospects who talk to us in a boring monotone? Again, this is a hint. If engineers can get excited about a topic, anyone can. We need to be more interesting to that our uh, monotone prospects uh, come alive. This tells us that they have no, pas no passion for what we're talking about at this moment. Time for us to change to a different topic or benefit. Want to do better? W w want to go deeper? Then listen to not only what is being said, but read between the lines. What is not being said could be more important. Now we are at the alpha level of listening skills. Number three, be a great listener. People like Isaac, to... thank you. Thank you very much for your reading. Take a break for now. Thanks again. And I would like to ask continue to read. Friend and partner from New Jersey, the most reliable manager, Iris Cristobal. Iris, please go ahead. Thank you, Alex. Be a great listener. People love to talk. They will tell us exactly what is on their minds. How hard is that? All we have to do is shut up long enough and our prospects will tell us even deepest, most secret thoughts. Listening helps us identify their hot buttons. When we listen with acceptance, we gain their respect and trust. It is hard to listen without wanting to convince other peer, the, uh, the other person about our opinions. Biting our tongue helps us keep quiet long enough so that we can understand what the other person is thinking. Want to make this even better? Try reflecting back or repeating what others tell us just to make sure that we understand. This also gives us a chance to clarify our thoughts about what our prospects are thinking. Normally, people listen with the intention of what they're going to say next. They don't listen to the other person's message. Focusing on their message helps. Want to make this better? Let's be aware that we currently use selective listening. We filter out what we don't want to hear especially if it conflicts with the conversation inside our heads. Yeah, we are normal. We have many cognitive biases. Number four, use open-ended questions. Asking questions is a fast way to get information from others. Police detectives love to ask open-ended questions. When suspects answer open-ended questions, they often incriminate themselves by revealing too much. Our prospects will be will do the same. As humans, we love to talk about ourselves. We are our favorite topic. The more we understand our prospects, the better we can serve them. Some of my favorite questions. How did you get into this type of career? What do you like best? about your job what do you like least about your job what is the hardest part of dieting when did you decide to start looking for a new car why did you choose disney world instead of the beach the more our prospects talk the more we understand number five observe our prospects basic personality if we are familiar with the four color personalities, we will know the default thinking patterns of our prospect and what motivates them. 
if we are not familiar with the four color personalities, here is a quick primer. Yellow personalities find fulfillment in helping other people. Take massage therapists, kindergarten school teachers, and social workers. What is their default thinking pattern? Support, encouragement, teamwork, agreement, sharing, patience, trust, and cooperation. They want to know how we offer, what we offer can help others. Blue personalities, active versus passive, talking versus listening, excitement, new adventures, enthusiasm, and fun. Everyone knows at least one blue personality who is always talking, has a good story, and is a people person. We never have to read their minds. Too busy telling us what's on their minds, usually with no filters. Red personalities? These are bottom line people who get things done. Results matter. They like to be the boss, to be in charge, and to tell other people what to do. Managers, politicians, and top sales leaders are red personalities. Their default thinking pattern? Strong willed? Lead the way, determined, competitive, and with little time for social chit-chat. We know they're always thinking, thinking this. Get to the point. Stop wasting time. Tell me the facts now. I don't have the time to listen to waffling fluff. Have countries to conquer, empires to build. Green personalities, these are our accountants engineers, computer scientists, and generally boring people. They live for facts and data and love to ask endless questions. Their main motive? To avoid making a bad decision. They have programs that tell them to delay any decision until every possible factor has been analyzed. What are they naturally thinking? I need to be careful. I need to think of every possibility that could go wrong. I must avoid risk at all costs. If we determine our prospects' color personalities early in our conversation, we will know what thoughts to look for. Number six, anticipate common objections. We want to address to address our prospects' objections before they have a chance to raise them. Prevention is easier than a cure. This is the reason for the experience. If we gave 100 presentations and listed the common objections, we would know their possible objections before they raise them. We won't get this experience from sitting at home thinking about their objections. Real life is more accurate. When done correctly, the conversation might sound like this. Us. You might be skeptical that this would work for you. Prospects, you're right. I am skeptical. I've heard too many horror stories of people who tried and failed. I was thinking just that. Notice that we are still in rapport. No resistance. Prevention works. Number seven. Ask our prospects how they made a similar decision in the past. When we heard our prospects' stories, take notes. We want to learn from their past experiences of how they made decisions in the past. What are our prospects' patterns? What seems most important? How long did it take? What was the reason that triggered their final decision? Again, our prospects is telling us exactly what is going on inside of their minds. Number eight, let's take a lesson from hypnosis. Think about a hypnosis session. During hypnosis, our minds are open and we accept new suggestions with ease. Why is this? Because a trained hypnotist knows how to start with our current beliefs. Current beliefs? 
Well, our hypnotist will be using statements that are likely be true of almost anyone. Our hypnotist might say something like this. As you are sitting here today in this comfortable chair, listening to the chirping birds outside this window, what is our natural reaction? We think, yes, I'm sitting here today. Yes, this chair is very comfortable. Yes, those birds are chirping. We feel that the, the hypnotist understands us. We feel that the hypnotist sees and understands the world from our viewpoint. We can accept that our hypnotist tells us next, as long as it is not too far from reality. Hypnotism is the ultimate rapport. We give up our skepticism, relax, and accept new suggestions and facts. What did the hypnotist do? The hypnotist read our minds. Reading our minds was nothing more than observing the obvious. If the hypnotist wishes to take us deeper into hypnosis, there will be more statements that we would agree with. Maybe the hypnotist would continue with the obvious facts such as, this is a warm summer day. And now, some magic. Our hypnotist could calmly ask, tell me about your favorite vacation spot. With our eyes closed, we transfer ourselves back to the place in time and relieve those happy moments. All our hypnotist has to do is take notes, and now he understands more about that happy place in our minds. Hypnotists are great listeners. If we wish to have superhuman mind-reading powers, we will want to develop superhuman listening powers. We want to develop, we do not need to put people into trances, but we do need to listen for the cues that tells us what is going on in their minds. And then, repeat. After we read our prospects' minds, we can repeat what we heard. This tells our prospects we understand them. Some examples of what we could say. Iris. Thank you very much for your reading. Thank you. Please take a break. And I would like to ask continue to read friend and partner assistant supervisor from Brooklyn, Zoya Sergei. Zoya, please go ahead. Thank you, Iris, again. Yeah. Thank you. Happy 45th fifth anniversary and I wish everyone to be healthy forever. Some examples of what we could say. I see that you are a practical person. It sounds like you really want to lose weight. I see that you love your family. It sounds like you feel stressed about this problem. You impress me as, as someone who wants to get ahead. You certainly, you certainly are a person who takes good care of your health. I see that you are very careful about risk. How can our prospects argue with what they told us? Want to make it unbelievably easier? Say this. Based on what you told me, I feel you are thinking, we will sound so professional. What are we thinking? If we're like most marketing professionals, we are thinking, what are some great common facts that I can start with that will help my prospects relax and listen with an open mind? To come up with these common facts, all we have to do is start thinking like our prospects. Let's learn and practice that skill now. Mind reading in action. Chicago, 1975. It is early on a Sunday evening. My phone rings 
and the caller is upset. You need to come downtown to the Holiday Inn immediately. We have a problem, and it is your problem. Well, that didn't sound good. I was just a small-time network marketer trying to build my business with home meetings. I wasn't sure why a big-time company like the Holiday Inn would be calling me. But this wasn't feeling good. I drove downtown and walked into the lobby. Uh-oh. Standing room only. Angry people shouting. A riot reading to explode, ready to explode. I work my way through the crowd at the front desk and introduced myself. The manager quickly took me to the back room. What is going on out there? I asked. It's your people, the manager said. My people? I don't have any people here. Your staff told me it is all your fault. Staff? I don't have any. And then I saw someone I recognized. Ah, the staff. The staff was one of my new downlight distributors. He was shaking and apologized. I didn't know it would turn out like this, honestly. The crowd got louder. It wasn't looking good. So I asked my new distributor, what did you do? He shuddered. He stuttered. My friend knows a popular disc jerky, so I got some free advertising on his radio show earlier today. I had the disc jerky announce jobs, jobs, jobs for everyone. Come to the Holiday Inn this evening at 6 p.m. to get your job. With that explanation, my distributor announced, I quit. This business isn't for me. I'm out of here. The Holiday Inn staff released him and glared at, him, at me. What are you going to do about this? The crowds is shouting got louder. My now retired distributor had reserved a small meeting room for interviewing the applicants. But with 100 plus mad people in the lobby, there was no way that was going to work. I had to think quickly. Give me the ballroom quick. Get them out of your lobby. I can talk to them there. I hoped this gave me time to think. The manager said, said sure, get them out of the lobby and there will be a, char a charge for the ballroom too. No problem, I said. I would worry about that later. The mob moved to the ballroom. Gang members, unemployed teenagers, and mothers on welfare rushed into the ballroom. As I walked to the front of the ballroom, I wondered what I could do next. People were upset, shouting, and ready to fight. It looked like a losing battle, but then I had an idea. Try some mind-reading skills. If I could read their minds, they might be quiet long enough to hear a few words of my message. This would get me permission for a few more words before they would interrupt. I needed time to calm them down. I needed time to explain. If I couldn't read their minds, they would attack. Some self-appointed mob leader yelled, Quiet, quiet, he's going to talk. Mind reading, this had better be good. No chance. No do-overs. I studied. How many of you are here for the job? Hands went up. A few people whispered, shh. 
They wanted to hear what I would say next. I know many of you spent your last few dollars on bus fare to get here tonight. Several people in the audience grumbled in agreement. And I understand that many of you are angry. You feel like you've been lied to. A few people shouted in agreement with some extra four-letter words thrown in. Most people want to know what is going on and what we can do to help you get jobs. A few boos and some more shouting. But at least I was getting a few words in. So you're probably wondering what I can do to help. Yeah, they were wondering. The mind reading was working. The crowd put their pitchforks and torches away from the moment to hear what I would say to fix this ugly situation. I can't give you a job, but I might be able to help you get a job. I was struggling, but the crowd was listening. They wanted to hear more. I had their attention. The result? A happy ending? No. It was still humiliating, embarrassing, and ugly, but not life-threatening. I committed to helping them get jobs, reimbursed some bus fare, apologized profusely, and left the hotel that evening with high blood pressure. But I watched television non-stop for a few days to recover. But I learned many lessons. First, hostile crowds. Definitely not my favorite thing. Most hostile crowds won't even let us start. They want to heck, heckle and shout their opinions and hate. To combat this, we have to act fast. If our hostile crowd senses any weakness, lack of confidence, or that we don't think as they do, it is over. Even our best logical facts won't be heard. Unless there is a rapport, our message dies. Our message will never enter their brains. Second, how many words do we have to win over a hostile uh, crowd or a skeptical prospect? Five words, ten words, we're going to be judged and judged harshly. No time for idle chit chat and small talk. Third, use words and phrases that match the emotions that are in their minds now. More about that in a bit. With the hostile crowds or prospects, starting with a mind reading statement is the best way. For our message to be heard. 10 words. As you're sitting here today, you're probably wondering. Think about what happens when we say these 10 words to a group of prospects at our opportunity presentation. What are our prospects thinking? Yes, we're sitting here today. And yes, we're wondering of course, our prospects are wondering. Well, that is what humans do when we don't know what is going to happen next. Is this the best way to start with a hostile crowd? Not sure. There could be better ways, but this way at least has a chance of working. We're not trained hip, 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 hypnotists but we do know the importance of mind reading and rapport. How would we continue our opportunity presentation? It would sound like this. As you're sitting here today, you're probably wondering, and then let's fill in the rest of our opening sentence. Here are some options. How long will this last? How much longer can we put up with this problem? When is our next break? Will I have to pay for lunch? 
are you for or against this proposal? How expensive is this going to be? How is this even possible? Are you sure? What will others think if I do this? Can I do this? What are my chances of success? Is there some sort of guarantee? I don't want to take any risk. Oh my, lots of possibilities. The easiest way to mind reading a hostile audience is to think of their skepticism. When people fold their arms or wrinkle their foreheads, we know they are skeptical. It should not be hard to guess their objections. Mind reading our prospects' objections can change their viewpoint about us. We can get upgraded from a pushy salesperson to a trusted advisor. Do it. Thank you very much for your reading. Please take a break. I would like to stop to read the book today at this chapter because I would like to share something with you to help you share information about forever opportunity the best way possible with a YouTube channel. Give me a second. Let me switch the screen. Okay. Anybody confirm? Can you see my screen? With... Yes. Okay. Thank you, Isaac. Uh, my intention is very simple. I just would like to share something with you. Just yesterday, I posted this video, Forever Journey. Just yesterday, two days ago, there are 99, 49 views already. It's number one. It's not my accomplishment. It's a very good video, very valuable, and people love it. What I'm asking to do, what I'm asking you to do me a favor and to do a favor to our forever potential friends, partners. When you on any video like this, for example, and do not hesitate to click, click like if you like it. If you don't like it, don't click it. But if you like it, click it. That's number one. Number two. Make a comments here. People would like to see comments that it will activate video more. It will promote video more. More people would be able to watch this video again, to explore opportunity. I'm talking about this specific video. That's number one. Number two, let me go back. There is, you can see, so far, 154 videos here. It's a huge collection of video. All videos right here. Different subject, different information regarding business, regarding products, regarding opportunity, success story, etc., etc. Educational. A lot of valuable information for us to share with our potential friends and partners. But very valuable thing to know if, for example, you go to website like this and you copy this link right here and copy and paste in a different, or paste it to your email or to your messenger to anywhere, they will open this YouTube site and they don't know what to do next because there are a lot of videos again. 154 videos. So my advice to you is very simple. Let me show you. For example, for example, let me, one of the value, most of them, not most, a lot of video as very valuable. If you would like to share this information about Forever Marine Collagen, you should double click on this video. You look at the top trends. Right? And copy this link. Is it visible, right, Isaac? Yes. You copy this link, you go to the different, or you go to your email, or you go to Messenger and copy this specific link regarding which attached to this specific video, not the general YouTube channel. 
as it was at the beginning. So the, your prospect or somebody you would like to share this video, they will see this specific video. Any questions regarding this? None. Okay. There are, again, there are many more videos right here. I'm going to click back. So there is a valuable video uh, about success story. Senior manager, car bonus qualifier, Nina Denhard dog. Success story. Or what are you doing for a living? One minute video, but people will get some point. It's in English and in Russian video. Forever Living Opportunity, my presentation with the numbers. And there are two videos in English and Russian language too, for everybody. Now, review product catalog. This is a very valuable video for new person. You save time, do not cover this. Share this video, you double click on this video. Again, select this URL. Hello, Control. Helen. Excuse Hi, me. Hi, Alex. Glad to hear you. It's on a webinar the, the recording, right? <laughs> That's why I confused. I heard Iris' voice. <laughs> okay. And you are going to share this information with somebody else with a lot of details about products. And it's valuable for you to show that we, we have a system. It's not your accomplishment is not my accomplishment. It's a company provides a system. They don't need to know all these details at the beginning. Who did it and how? But you share information. There is a detailed product review in the Forever Product Catalog. Group by group by group. All the drinks, Beehive products, food supplements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's really valuable. And again. Do not hesitate to click like if you like it. Do not, I am asking you, please make a comments right here. It will be valuable. It's, it will be, look, this video watch 323 people already. And only 49 views in 11 months. Oh, yeah, I, I, I confuse you. I'm sorry. It was 323 subscribers. <clears throat> and only 49 views for 11 months. It should be many, many more because it's a really valuable information. Any question regarding this YouTube channel? How to copy, how to paste this link, how to send it? Copy the link right here, paste it to your browser or paste it to your email body and forward it to your prospect or your friend or your partner with Forever Living Products. Any questions so far? So far, no. Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. My pleasure. Okay. Happy birthday forever. I wish you very, very best. Many, many more to come. We will see you next time. Thank you to all readers, Isaac, Zoya, and Iris. Thank you, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, readers. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Everybody.